Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Aaron Cohen. I'm a neurosurgeon. I'll be talking to you today about general management of brain tumors. For the past 20 years, I've been involved with the care of more than 4,000 patients suffering from brain tumors. I've done more than 4,000 surgeries for this type of the tumor. So I'll be talking to you about some of the very much overall understanding of these tumors as it relates to the patients that are diagnosed, newly diagnosed with these tumors. So what are brain tumors? Brain tumors are masses of abnormal cells that can be classified based on the site of the origin of the tumor. In other words, is the brain the primary source of the tumor? Uh, is the tumor first originating within the brain? That's called a brain, primary brain tumor. Or is the tumor a metastatic or secondary tumor? In other words, the tumor originates from other parts of the body and secondarily invades the brain. It's a very important uh, factor in brain tumors regarding their invasiveness. Does the tumor spread or not? However, if the brain is very if the tumor is very invasive and spreads to other parts of the brain, that is considered a malignant tumor like a brain cancer or glioblastoma multiforme. Not all brain tumors are malignant. It is very important to know because traditionally the patients uh, have this understanding that all brain tumors can be fatal. That is not the case. There is a very large group of brain tumors that are benign, they are non-invasive, surgical resection results are excellent and the lifespan can be really very long. So what are the brain tumors in terms of their epidemiology and uh, their occurrence? First of all, their, uh, brain tumors are newly diagnosed in about 24 individuals per 100,000 people. They are the most common type of the tumor that occur in children between ages of 0 to 14. The brain tumors are most frequently seen in older age groups rather than younger age groups. And they're mostly benign, in fact, as I said, and slow growing. The most common types or subtypes of brain tumors include meningiomas. Those are 38% of all CNS or central nervous system tumors. They arise from the covering of the brain or what we call meninges. Um, mostly, again, are benign. Surgical resection is very effective. Gliomas are about 25% of brain tumors. They arise from glial cells that support the neurons of the central nervous system, and they comprise uh, about 80% of malignant or cancerous brain tumors. Lastly, there are pituitary tumors that arise from the pituitary gland. It is a gland at the base of skull. This tumor type can compress the optic chiasm or the eye nerves and lead to visual symptoms. What are the most common brain tumor symptoms? Those are headaches, nausea, vomiting, fatigue, confusion, personality changes, balance problem, and seizures. Especially in higher grade tumors, personality change can be a significant component of the tumor. What are the common tests we use for diagnosing brain tumors? Magnetic resonance imaging, or MRI, is often used. It examines the brain tissues in detail. The CT scan, however, can be used for diagnosing the tumors that affect the bony structures or the skull base. And further imaging, such as PET, can be used for other parts of the body to determine the site of the origin of the tumor if a metastatic tumor or a secondary tumor is suspected. What are the treatment options? In general, there are three treatment options, observation, radiation therapy, or surgical resection. And in fact, in many instances, a combination of these options may be used to treat the brain tumor. So among the treatment options, observation is used if the tumor is incidentally found and patient has no symptoms and the tumor is believed to be a benign tumor on imaging. Um, this is really preferred for slow-growing tumors such as meningiomas or schwannomas, especially in older patients. 
where surgical resection could have significant risks. Also, smaller asymptomatic tumors in the deeper portion of the brain can also be referred to for observation rather than radiosurgery or fractionate radiotherapy. So, what is radiosurgery? Radiosurgery is a concentrated beam of radiation that are aimed at a tumor. It usually takes about 30 to 50 minutes to conduct the treatment and the patient goes home the same day. However, fractionated radiotherapy is a smaller dose of radiation and therefore they're safer. They're aimed at the tumor and it's performed over several visits and um, it takes up to 18 months for radiation to take effect and stop the growth of the tumor. This modality is often preferred for tumors that are residual or recurrent and each session usually takes about 5 to 15 minutes. Regarding other treatment options, surgery remains one of the most effective therapies. The surgeon attempts to remove as much of the tumor as possible safely. At times, especially for gliomas, we may remove a little bit, a few millimeters of brain tissue surrounding the glioma to minimize the chance of recurrence, especially in tumors that are higher grade and have finger projections that go into the normal brain. Some tumor may be left behind if the tumor is too close or involved with critical nerves or portions of the brain or the blood vessels. And in this case, a more aggressive therapy can lead to more complications or even stroke. So what are the complications associated with surgery? It could be accumulation of blood, brain um, fluid within the brain called cerebral edema. This also is very much associated with brain tumors before the surgery or treatment. We'll treat that with steroids to calm down the edema. However, this treatment is not um, a curative treatment or a permanent treatment, and it's only short-lived um, and may lead to adverse effect if it's continued for longer than a few weeks. Other complications of treatment, both medical and surgical, can be fatigue, brain fluid leak from incision, bleeding, infection, cognitive dysfunction, or rarely stroke. What are the outcomes? Again, the outcome very much depends on the tumor type. Is the tumor benign or malignant? If it's benign, the lifespan is significant. If it's very malignant, the lifespan is relatively short. And obviously, how effective is surgery or other modalities in treatment of the tumor? If the tumor has very high resection potential, the lifespan is significant. And also, the severity of neurological symptoms before surgery are very much correlated the quality of life and the extent of lifespan after surgery. The patient should very much discuss and expect what are the treatment options for every tumor before make, making their final decision. It is critical for the patients to um, obtain that information from their surgeon, including the expertise of the surgeon for every tumor type. Every surgeon who treats brain tumors may not have the expertise to remove all kinds of tumors, especially those tumors at the level of the skull base where those tumors can be really very much involved with critical parts of the brain and the nerves. The expertise in skull base surgery is very much required. And again, as a repetition, not all brain tumors are cancerous. They are actually the majority are benign and they're associated with excellent long-term outcomes. The questions that you need to ask from your surgeon, neurologist, or your other physicians is, what kind of brain tumor do I have? What is the grade of the tumor? What parts of my brain are affected by the tumor? And what do those parts of the brain do? Will it be possible to surgically safely remove my tumor? If you can surgically remove the tumor, would I need other modalities of therapy like radiation or chemotherapy? What are the possible side effects of these therapies? Who might my treatment team include and for how long do I need to see them? Are there other alternative treatments for my condition besides the above treatments I discussed? Will there be any lasting problems from this disease or the treatment modalities? 
and also are there any support groups that I can be involved in to be able to be well informed. And finally, one of the most effective elements in your final outcome regarding your treatment would be the expertise of the surgeon. Does the surgeon have the expertise required to treat the type of the brain tumor you have? You know, my expertise, for example, has been very much in skull base, in the complex benign tumors that affect the brain stem and the critical nerves at the level of the base of skull. You really need that kind of expertise for your complex tumors. And again, I'm more than happy to be involved in your care if possible, and feel free to contact me. Thank you again for listening. Thank you.